Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the DLF Trade Show on the DLF YouTube channel. Russ and Addison, we're here again, as always, to help you do good things in Dynasty Fantasy Football because that's what it's all about. It's about doing good. It's about it's winning, you know. I guess <laughs> if that's if that's how you want to play the game. If that's what's but, important to you, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Though I do remember one time someone legitimately asked the question, "Which do you prefer, winning championships or like rebuilding teams?" And like I froze, and I'm like, like I know the answer is supposed to be winning championships, but rebuilding is so much fun, <laughs> especially when you can rebuild to then win championships. That's yeah. And, and the truth of it really is that's the fun of being in multiple, multiple leagues where if you win two or three, it just funds everything else. You know, it's it's bankroll. That, that's how it is. Boom. We are at the end. We we have we oh, I, I'm going to I'm going to prevent preemptively celebrate. We did it. We we made it through every position. Uh, we did quarterbacks. We did running backs. We did wide receivers. So now, of course, we are talking about top tier tight ends because i love me some alliteration let's talk about sam laporta who is a lot of if not most people's tight end one very 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 good no reason to think he can't just keep doing what he did that offense isn't going to change that much he's that was not a fluke it, it wasn't like evan engram style where everyone else was hurt he yeah. was a part of every facet of the offense it wasn't just touchdowns it wasn't I, I always feel bad. It wasn't like Jarvis Landry style, uh, seven catches oh. for 63 yards, even though like I will even scream at myself. Be like, but there was that one year where he put up that double digit touchdowns and he was the wide receiver three. Um, but yeah, Sam Laporta, very, very good. But let's see just how good. Let's see what some of these trades look like, because I'm very interested because I have a lot of Sam Laporta. Sam Laporta, 12-team super flex, non-tight ends premium. Okay. Sam Laporta for Kyron Williams in the 25 second. Laporta, 566.5. Kyron Williams, 438.8. 25 second, 82.5 total, 521.3. So all intents and purposes, fair. Is Kyron Williams still going to be that guy next season? I have no idea. <laughs> I wish he was. Like, I wish I could sit here and say with – all the confidence in the world that Kyron Williams is going to be Kyron Williams for the next year or two. Now, I don't necessarily mean running back to Kyron just Williams. a starter. Yeah. I wish I just, I wish I could sit here and tell you that he's going to be the starter on September 1st or whenever it is. Like if he'll have that workload, like, not even as much because I don't think another running back touched the ball for the last third. Like when he came back that last time, like I don't think another running back even bothered stepping Barely. on the field. I want Sam Laporta. That's my answer. I yeah. think I want to remove myself from the uncertainty of Kyron Williams. I don't, I'm not going to say that he's like, he feels like this year's is Damian Pierce, where it really was just like, just him. And if they add anybody at all in the backfield that could just take away 20 to 30% of Kyron's workload, that that'll dip. Kyron was way better than Damian Pierce was this yep. year than Damian Pierce was um, last year. So that Kyron is just so much better, but it's just, there's a lot of uncertainty in terms of his workload, what the LA Rams want to do a second round pick. Just give me Sam Laporta. So my question really then becomes, is this guy enough of a positional advantage for me to hold on to him? Or is it worth downgrading and getting something up top of course now this is not exactly that because you're getting another position but like let's say you have maybe not a mcbride maybe you have njoku maybe you have engro maybe you have jake ferguson another guy you feel completely good in your tight end spot and then you have sam laporte would is he enough of a positional advantage for you to be like i am holding on to this guy because he makes a difference on my roster. Um, no, not entirely. I mean, I think you're kind of saying two two things here at once. Is that yes, Sam Laporta deservedly is deservedly of being a top three, top yes. one uh, dynasty tight end because of the fact that he is you know entering his second year. He yep. had a phenomenal rookie season. I ideally, it should just continue to be that way, if not even improve. With that said, though. 
it does feel like there's not that much of a difference between Laporta and the rest of those guys, but it does seem like there is a value difference between Laporta and the rest of those guys to where it does make sense to either say, maybe it doesn't make sense to go get Sam Laporta. Like to just, if you want a tight end, be like, I want a top tight end. Let me go pay for Laporta. Why not just go and pay for Trey McBride or Mark Andrews or, you know, even dip a little bit lower than that. And like you said, like go get, Evan Ingram on the cheap, go get Jake Ferguson on the cheap. Like those guys might just be just as good for the next two or three years as Sam Laporta, but you're paying a lot less. Or if you already have Sam Laporta, try to see if you could trade off of him or try to see if you can move down. If you can get a, a value tier kind of difference going from Laporta to McBride or Laporta to uh, Andrews or anybody else like that. All right. So I'm going to speak our language for a second. Let's take Kyron Williams out of this. Mm -hmm. What if we replace Kyron Williams with either Tank Dell or Jordan Addison? Uh, uh, And just to put in perspective why I'm using those names, they're literally next to him on the the analyzer values. Or for you specifically, if you want to keep it running back, ETN is also right next to him. Oh, okay. Yep, we're in. (laughs) <laughs> weirdly yeah, enough it, go down a little bit you get to drake london man this is your sweet spot <laughs> this is this is a good spot right here um i would probably i think it's kyron i think it's kyron that's throwing this off right right and, and it's a little like i'm i'm so thankful that we have that values button on the analyzer where you could just see what everyone's worth so we can do this for these for these shows because Yes, the specifics, looking at these trades absolutely help, but you know, it's really the value that matters more than anything else, not these specific players. I, I really think at equal value of that one player, and we're still talking player and 25 second, not let's put those two together, because of course that always makes it a little better. Just, pre- just saying player of same value as Kyron Williams and that 25 second we just found like four or five names where we're just like, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yep. 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 <laughs> and, and I think that's what it is. Like I love having Sam Laporta on my teams, but I don't feel like it's that I need this massive overpay. I need him on my team for this advantage. It is a, it, like everything Addison said before, he is a positional advantage. He is a top four or five producing tight ends, not even dynasty value. Producing, and that's really what matters when we talk about positional advantage, because it's about the points you're scoring in that position where other teams can't. Mm -hmm. But is it enough? And the answer could be yes next year alone. But as of right now, it might not be. It used to be if you have Travis Kelsey, you have a positional advantage over 11 teams in your league. Where now, if you have Sam Laporta, you still have a positional advantage, but now it's over like half of your league you yeah know? i mean it's probably like a good like seven eight teams yeah right like, and again that at this point isn't a knock against laporta it is a we finally have scoring tight ends and i'm gonna say the name just because i know addison is tired of hearing about it kyle pitts is gonna be one of these scoring tight ends now so uh, that's maybe. another one and we got brock bowers getting added into the mix Yep, I, I brought up Pitts to doing this. He's like, I'm, I'm tired of talking about Pitts. I'm t- I, I don't want to talk about Pitts. <laughs> <laughs> this, this is a real fun one. Let's move on to the next one. So this is 12-team super flex and a two PPR tight end premium. This changes things <laughs> uh, value-wise. Full two premium, man, tight ends are just quarterbacks. Tight ends are quarterbacks at this point, yeah, you know, like yeah. the top tier of them. So Sam Laporta, and again, this won't like the tight end premium button on the analyzer is a 0.5 premium. Right. So we need to add some percentages to this number to get a real idea of the value, but he's in here right now at 663.5 and the trade is for the 103, which is 543.6. I'm not ready for this question, but I'm going to ask it (laughs) in a 12 team two PPR super flex league two PPR tight end super flex league. How early is Brock Bowers going? Uh, he would probably go above neighbors. And I bet you he, yeah, he would. Before Marvin. No, I don't think he'll, I don't think he'll go before Marvin. Um, and he'll probably go after Caleb. Uh, he's probably at one Oh three, one Oh four. 
I think it really just depends on where the quarterbacks end up going. Like if we if if one of these quarterbacks goes to New England, I feel like we just kind of dismiss that quarterback. <laughs> Unless it's Daniels, because at least Daniels can run. Um, but that'll hurt his value, whoever ends up going to be the quarterback for New England. Yeah, so, and now there's this JJ McCarthy to the Vikings. And if that happens in the first round, I think that pushes another quarterback into the top of this rookie draft. Maybe, yeah. Um, but yeah, he's probably one of three, one of four ahead of neighbors and probably one, if not both quarterbacks. All right. Because here's, uh, you know, I asked the question for a reason, which means if we're taking Bowers at the one of three in this league, I'm taking Laporta over Bowers. Cause we've seen yes, it. We yeah. know, no, those are the two things we've seen. And we know I was trying to like, <laughs> what's the third thing? What's the third thing? There is no third thing. Um, in which case Laporta. Yeah. <laughs> Speaking of fun, we're going to talk about Mark Andrews next. So Mark Andrews still very, very good, still very, very stuck on the Ravens. Um, and that's not a bad thing. I, I, I realize the way I said that. <laughs> I meant to say he's his position is stable, but that really Tragic. just came out wrong <laughs> in, in general. So Mark Andrews, very, very good coming off the injury. And I'm not concerned for him career wise. Like I think he'll come back and be Mark Andrews again. The offense will only get better because there's a year in the system and all of that stuff. And they never had a second pass catcher step up after Flowers. And even Flowers, well, likely did okay. But it's not like, like, I hate. It's not as if likely did well enough to push work away from Andrews when Andrews comes back. Right. So Andrews, to me, I get it. He is 28 which to me isn't old for a tight end since I'm still throwing the 34 year old Kelsey up there, but he's, you know, way older than Laporta still older than Kincaid. You know, he might as well be Kyle Pitts's grandfather, but you're going to get those points. And that's really what matters when we're talking about Mark Andrews. So, Oh man, we interesting. Uh, so the first trade 12 team super flex, no premium for tight ends, Mark Andrews and Isaiah likely. So you're getting the Baltimore tight ends for tank Dell. Mark Andrews, 361.9. Is Isaiah likely 55.6? 417.5 total for Tank Dell, 441.3. So fair enough, intents and purposes. I mean, I want more, especially when you're getting one starter, even though it's two players. Like, you're never starting both of these guys at the same time. Handcuff. <laughs> yeah. So in that case, like, I feel like this is the tank Dell side value wise. And mm -hmm. I'm doing my best not to let my bias take over here, but I just want tank Dell. I would also take tank Dell in this is uh trade too. Um, but I think that if you're a team that let's say you draft a tank Dell in like the third round, you already have like four or five, like solid guys and tank just kind of hit unexpectedly extra depth but you really need a tight end like your tight end one right now is like you know pat fryermuth or something like that or even lower maybe juan johnson sorry i just hit you with both those um and you just want to go get a top tight end i wouldn't i wouldn't be sad trading tank dell for mark andrews and then you get the extra insurance of isaiah likely on top of that as well too which is weird to handcuff tight ends but that's the one handcuff i think that the only handcuff probably that works very, I'm not yeah. upset with trading Tank Dell for Mark Andrews straight up. I would like more. I don't know what that more is. Like just being like, it feels like picky to say I want like a third round pick added in or something like that. It would probably have to be a late second, you know, but I don't know. Like you get to a point where that might be too much then for just Tank Dell. So then you got to, you know, you get into like those whole weird figuring out the values by adding in thirds and fourths and stuff like what that. If None of it really matters. <laughs> we threw, What if we threw like Romeo Dubs, Jahan Dotson with Andrews and, and likely like uh, that again, they're around 80, 90 points, which is around a 25 second. I mean, they're about the three Oh four in the analyzer. I, I tried to go a little lower, just to have a guy that you can throw in as your wide receiver five or six on your roster for bi-week fill-ins. And both of those guys have a little bit of upside, maybe dubs a little less because of how many great young wide receivers apparently are on the Packers right now. 
But like Dotson with the new offense coming along with a new quarterback coming in, can he be a guy there where we've seen him do pretty well? We've seen him score some touchdowns. I mean, scrolling up to get to that late second, we're talking more along the lines of scroll, 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 scroll. Come on, wide receivers. Not a lot of wide receivers are around here. I mean, I don't, I don't want to use Jacoby Myers or anything, but now we're up to like the 206. There are no wide receivers in this entire area. This is ridiculous. I was going to say, like, when you get to this point of trying to figure out who to add, like, it really just comes down to your own personal preference. Like, mm-hmm. I'm looking at it, and I'm like, I don't want Dotson or Dobbs just because I don't feel like there's a lot of upside there. But if you scroll two names down, then you find a t- Dontavian Wicks. I'd rather have Wicks than Dobbs or Dotson. I think there's more upside there. Uh, you get to Kendry Miller, who didn't really do anything, but I think has upside as a handcuff. And if uh, Alvin Kamara gets moved or anything like that, then that would work. You get a little bit scroll up a little bit more in terms of value you get to Nick Chubb is sitting down there. I know he's coming off a really bad knee injury, but I think there's more upside with Nick Chubb than there is with someone like Jerry Judy, you know, yeah. it, just to plug into your lineup at some point, James Connor will always and forever endorse buying James Connor as a contender. Derek Henry is in that range too. He's fallen. Even Jameson Williams, like at least has upside that he showed that he was able to get, they were manufacturing him touches at the end. It wasn't all yeah. that great with those touches, but they were trying to work him in. But he had that one end around where he just went, or jet sweep, <laughs> where he was really fast. Yeah, so it really just comes down to, I want, I, I think I want something that's not, that is equal to a third-round pick, but doesn't have the unknownness of the third-round pick, but still has yeah, upside, sure. and not just like is going to just sit on my roster, and I'm never really going to play them in the in my starting lineup. Yeah, uh, the I the answer is tank Dell and I'm trying to think about like, if this were a trade addicts league and it was 0.75 premium, would that change? I still think the answer is tank Dell in that situation, though. I would understand it a whole lot I, more. I think that makes it fair then. Yeah. In, in a tight end premium. Yeah. That's, that's where I'm at. All right, but let's move on to the next one, which is 12 team super flex with a 0.5 tight end premium. Mark Andrews for the 108 and Tucker craft. Tucker craft came on. A little bit towards the end, start to do pretty well. The 108 again. We are if if JJ McCarthy pushes his way in, the 108 in the right league can maybe be Brock Bowers. Yes, it'll probably be like a 10 to 15 percent chance, but yes. <laughs> so, but more along the lines, we're probably talking about Odunze or wide receiver four. Or McCarthy. Maybe? Maybe. I think that's too high for RB1. Even if we get somebody in a like in the best landing spot, like Braylon Allen to the Cowboys, I still don't think people are going to take him one away. Yeah, it's pretty high. I um, probably would, but I don't it, think the vast majority would. <laughs> like I liked I liked Tucker Craft coming in. I liked him more than Musgrave, which was really fun that they both got, you know, Mark Andrew, you know, the Mark Andrews situation where mm-hmm. Hayden, Hayden Hurst, Hurst, Mark Andrews, drafted in the same draft. Um, but I'm going to take Andrews here. Like this, this feels like, you know what? Maybe I earned the 108, so I made it to the playoffs. Mm-hmm. Maybe I feel like I got bounced too early. I had a bad week. I left Keenan Allen in my lineups. Oops. Um, not speaking from experience, sir. You had Tucker Craft. Apparently, it maybe was your starting tight end. That's why I yeah. got bounced. So. This feels like a very easy move to be like, I'm going to give myself a top five producing tight end easy, probably still top three. Like He's really, really good and take the mystery out of this. Let me just go make my team better. Yeah, I'm, I'm in the exact same boat. I would probably I would spend the one point oh eight from Mark Andrews in just like a normal league. Then when you add the extra, you know, point five PPR tight end premium to it, I think that makes the decision even that much easier. So. Yeah, I don't think I read the numbers, by the way. 463.9 for Mark Andrews, 325 for the 108, and Tucker Craft 40 for a total of 365. So this is pretty actually handedly Mark Andrews anyway. So yeah, Mark Andrews. So let's see who our third tight end is. Oh, it's TJ Hawkinson. That guy. He's pretty good. He's pretty good. But <sighs> injured. What week was it? Hold on. It was December 26th. I looked it up before uh, 
Yeah, week 16, ACL and MCL tears uh, is rough. So, I mean, we're talking even if he does make it back for the start of the season, which would be seemingly miraculous, he's not going to be 100% for probably this entire season. I was going to say, I'm looking at an ESPN article from a couple weeks ago that's saying that they are looking at the timeline of being late September or early October. So he pup list might be a pup candidate. And probably not going to have him for four or five weeks. Isn't it six? Uh, Pup, I think, is four. Well, on here it says whether he'll be placed on the pup list, making him ineligible to play until week five. <laughs> so that's what yes, ESPN Andrew. says. Okay. What do they know? <laughs> but regardless, TJ Hawkinson was very, very good. He was the tight end one going. He. Finished as the tight end one in total points anyway, even missing a game and change. Um, so I don't think we're worried about that. Tight end one in points per game as well. So again, very, very good. Maybe you're concerned about who their quarterback is going to be. It would have to be a spectacularly bad player for me to discount Hawkinson and Justin Jefferson. Yes. Like it would have to be like, Desmond Ritter. <laughs> that was the first name that came to mind. <laughs> a guy that we've seen Zach Wilson players yeah. already. Like that's what it would have to be. Like that's that's how bad it would have to be. And I I have to believe the Vikings aren't that silly. I'll use that word. Right. So I'm gonna I'm very curious to see how these trades are gonna go. Uh 12 team super flex, no tight end premium. The 105 and TJ Hawkinson for Devon Achan and Tank Dell. We just love us some Tank Dell in this show today. Mm-hmm. The 105, 438, TJ Hawkinson, 405 for a total of 843. Achan, 521. Tank Dell, 441. Total of 962. So this is coming in pretty heavily on the Achan Dell side. What is Achan, man? Like, He has to, like, by default, be a top five-ish dynasty running back based on the four games he had where he just, like, went crazy. Um, Sure. I mean, he's not a top five running back for me in dynasty, but he is top ten. All right, fair. Maybe I got a little overzealous because I also just didn't count. I just said a number that sounded in the middle. Which I mean, he's definitely like consensus wise, he is in like that five, six range. Like when you get past the big three and then you hit Christian McCaffrey because it's Christian McCaffrey. And then you get to like Jonathan Taylor, Travis Etienne, Kenneth Walker, Kyron Williams, Devon Achan. Like those, that's like the group there that kind of gets sorted however you like. With that said, though, the biggest difference for me in this trade is I think the values between Achan and the 105 are off. Yes, that's um, where I was leading. <laughs> yeah. Yep. It I don't I mean, I'm taking that first tier over Achan. Yeah, 100%. So, so like you I wouldn't I would probably if Achan was in this rookie draft with the knowledge that I know of his upside in the Miami Dolphins offense, I still probably wouldn't touch him until we get to Brock Bowers. Which yeah, I was about to say after neighbors, game. which is to me around Brock. Oh, Dunze or or Bowers. So. Yeah. So again, we're taking the 105 over HN, which actually has about like a 90, 85 ish point difference in favor of HN. And Hawkinson and Dell are pretty even. And if I feel like if you were willing to pretty much Andrews for Dell, you'd be willing to Hawkinson for Dell. Well, you'd take Hawkinson. Um, the only caveat with this one is I feel like you, if you're buying TJ Hawkinson right now, I think you're doing it knowing you're not really going to compete in 2024. Like, I think he's much more of a rebuilding, uh, asset right now because of, we just talked about how he might be a pup candidate. How effective is he going to be once he comes back from the injury? You know, we've seen a bunch of, I mean, a lot of them are running backs and stuff like that, but like Javante Williams took some time. Brees Hall took some time. Saquon Barkley a couple years ago took some time. Yeah. Uh, it's, you know, Kyler Murray took some time coming back. Uh, even though he was playing well, it just didn't result into. No, no, no. He was terrible. He was the QB. He, ter- he was terrible. He was really bad. But I mean, like, he had a few games in there at the very beginning that it was just, he was, which I'm not saying that TJ Hawkinson won't be good. Like, you're not going to start him. 
Like if TJ yeah, Hawkins is it, active, it, you're he's starting on the him. Field, just, you're starting him. Yeah. yeah, but he's just not going to give you top three, top five production. I don't think. But the, re- the thing I love about you saying all this is it works out in this trade that way because you're getting the pick and TJ Hawkinson. Right. Yep. But that's and where like away a running back. The caveat in there is like I. I'm fine trading Tank Dell for Mark Andrews because Andrews is going to give you a full season. Of That's fair. What I expect to be top three fantasy production. Hawkinson is going to give you 75% of a season and uh, 50% of that is going to be tight end eight. And then the other 50%, you're hoping he returns to somewhat top five form because it's yeah. still the tight end position. So that's where, yeah. I, even though Tank Dell's hurt as well too, and he's also coming back from injury. I'd probably still. But there was also stuff coming out that he should be ready for OTA, so he'll definitely be ready. Yeah, by season he, yeah, he should be fine. Um, I'm going to take the pick in Hawkinson here, and it really does come down to my I don't know on Achan at this point. I feel like the 105 and Hawkinson are probably more versatile trade assets anyway in the long run. Mm-hmm. Even if you draft the 105, the player you draft at the 105 will be having probably most likely a wider trade audience than H. Hanwood. Agreed. So I, I think it'll make me sad to lose Tank Dell in this, but I think the 105 and Hawkinson's the right answer, even though the analyzer does not agree. That's my final answer at the end of all of that <laughs> as well. All right. I love that you found like one no premium, one premium for all of these tight ends, by the I, way. I didn't go in doing that, but um, it worked. It worked out. <laughs> <laughs> and I think this was probably going to be a very easy one to to talk about because we talked about, again, very similar trade with another player. 12-team super flex, two PPR tight end premium, Hawkinson for the 108 and James Cook. Is, what's James Cook to you? A really good RB2. Okay, good. Me too. That's like he ha- he'll have spike weeks, but more than not, right. he's just going to be okay. Yep. So that doesn't really move much of a needle for me. Like if I... Let's pre- let's take Hawkinson out of this. Let's pretend we're just trying to trade up in the rookie draft. I, I I don't know if James Cook is pushing me more than like two picks at most. Like I'm not like maybe 108 and James Cook for the 106. You could probably get to five for most people. I, I'm saying for me personally. Right. Like, I don't know if I'm because I mean we have three quarterbacks right now and then the two main wide receivers and my love for wide receivers will probably make me want that wide receiver too more than I want whatever is going to be at 108. Yep. Yeah, I mean uh, you're not getting that like I don't think that's going to net you Brock Bowers in a 2 PPR t- tight end premium league. I don't think that's going to net you any of the three quarterbacks and also not net you Marvin. Definitely not Marvin and probably not Neighbors. And maybe not Odunze. So, I mean, like, you're getting to the point where it, like, it really does come down to <laughs> maybe you just because that's it's the hard part about trading up within tiers is like people get locked into all these tiers. And it's really hard, even if you're one or two picks behind to get back up into there. It is difficult. Yeah. It's going to take a specific person or a specific player landing on a specific team that they're going to now be open to trading back. And James Cook's a, a very fine asset. I would love to have James Cook. But, yeah, it is difficult, I think, to trade up in that tier. Which is funny because the analyzer said that it should be pretty easily 108 in James Cook. That's why analyzers are part of the process. They are not the process. But speaking, oh. of, the, speaking of the process, we have no more trades to talk about on the trade show uh, trade show sheet which is what our file is named. Uh, so this has been the DLF trade show on the DLF YouTube channel. Russ Fisher, Dynasty Outhouse, Addison Hayes, at Amaze Hayes underscore. We'll catch you next time.